Okay. We're recording. Okay. All right. So, so let's see. Tentatively, then the homework is due Wednesday. The coherent state homework. Um, problem one might be a little confusing, but um, think about it. Um, also, I updated the homework assignment. Uh, one student asked me a question. Um, what was k dot x? And so um, I explained what k dot x was. And I updated the file on the web page. Um, so let me just explain for everybody what k dot x is. Or in fact, it's all been written just kx, and so that means k dot x minus k zero x zero. Or what's the same thing basically is uh, k dot x minus uh, k zero t since x0 is t, at least in natural units. Um, so any, any questions before we go on? All right. Let me um, remind you about the coherent state. The coherent state alpha is um, e to the minus alpha squared over 2. And then an exponential e the alpha a dagger acting on the ground state of the harmonic oscillator here. We're talking about commutation relations that look like this. Is the sun bothering anybody? We can shut the door if you want. The reason we have the windows open is not that I'm worried about viruses today. It's that the um, University um, supposed it was supposedly upgrading our electrical system. Instead, they put in modern equipment, but they downgraded the power, and there isn't enough power to run everything in the, in the department. And, uh, so, um, I fortunately open my window. I've suggested that other faculty members open their window, but they prefer to sit in the nitrogen core environment and with the window shut. I don't know why, but it's such a nice day. Anyway, this is e to the minus alpha squared over 2, a sum alpha a dagger to the n of the n factorial in the ground state. This is a sum from 0 to infinity. And this is e to the minus alpha squared over 2, sum alpha to the n over the square root of n factorial n. And so that's, um, that's another way of looking at the coherent state. There's another way um, of writing it. There's a unitary operator acting on uh, the ground state and d of alpha is e to the alpha a dagger minus alpha bar say uh, a. This thing is unitary because if you take, or alpha star, if you take the emission adjoint of the argument of the exponential, you just get the same thing with a minus sign. So this structure here is anti-remission, and consequently this thing is unitary. So the adjoint equals d inverse. This thing is written d because Flava called it a displacement operator. Anyway, the, um, these are eigenstates of the annihilation operator with eigenvalue alpha, and this is alpha is complex, but sometimes my point might write it as p plus i p over root 2. It's of course possible to put in, make this lambda q and p over lambda, and then you have a more general, um, a 
more general relation between the coherent states and the ordinary QP, but to keep the notation simple, I'm setting lambda to one. Are there any questions? All right, the identity operator is an integral outer product of alpha d2 alpha over pi. And this thing is effectively integral alpha alpha d real alpha dm alpha over pi. So it's an integration over the alpha plane. And um, I guess uh, another way of thinking about it is alpha alpha Notice the left column is down now. Um, this would be dq over root 2, dp over root 2, so it's dq dp over 2 pi. Okay. Now, the, you can use this formula here or some other formula to show that the inner product of two coherent states beta alpha is equal to beta alpha, beta star, or beta bar alpha, minus a half alpha squared, minus a half beta squared. And um, in particular, if the two are the same, then alpha alpha is just one. On the other hand, the Alpha value squared of beta alpha is e to the minus beta minus alpha squared. Okay, so these are a lot of relations that some of you have seen in quantum mechanics, or quantum optics, or optics classes, and um, these might be new to some of you. Yeah. Is this, this a operating on alpha should that be alpha alpha minus one? Is that b? Is that the what? Is that is a operating on that? Shouldn't that take it down? A on alpha is alpha alpha. Okay. Okay, you get two. One for the question, and one for the operation of the. Um, Awesome. Works for me. Video. The idea. So this is basically, I think, one of the homework problems. But what's going on here is, if A hits alpha, it lowers n to n minus one and throws out a factor of square root of n. So that turns this into n minus one, and you've got n minus one here and n minus one there, but you've got alpha to the n there pull out the alpha and what you've got and then you change n minus 1 to m and you've got the same thing again. You do something to infinity anyway. And um, so that's how it works. Any other questions? Okay. So now I thought we'd um, use these coherent states to do um, some path integrals. And let's stay with one mode for the moment. So we have here beta e to the minus i epsilon h of a and a dagger. Oh, I wrote it as a dagger a in the notes. These nodes are on the line. And, well, we're being cavalier here to order epsilon. So what happens? Well, oh, first of all, I want this thing to be normally ordered. So h of a dagger a might be 
omega a dagger a. It might be some other term, say, r a dagger plus, I guess it would have to be r star a because the, it has to be permissions, but it could have terms like uh, CNM, A dagger to the N, A to the M, summed on N and M. Okay. And this thing is said to be normally ordered because the A's are to the right of the A daggers. This means that you don't have any extra, you don't have any extra contributions from the commutator. Okay, well, yes. clearly. What did you also get terms of order one? What was that? Would you also get terms of order one that doesn't have any powers of A and A dagger? Yeah, if you have a constant, then that just sits Oh, it just factors out, okay, yeah. Well, it's not, I mean, it could be, in other words, there could be a term C00. Okay, okay fair enough, yeah. So, um, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so if you have like a Hamiltonian that's not normally ordered, can you rewrite it? Just it normally ordered. Yeah. So that would just like add and subtract terms, or yeah. can you just rearrange them at will? Yeah. So in other words, let's 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 do an example. Suppose that would. Yes. Why did you finish? Why? Yes. Uh, that, that'll become clear in a moment. But let me let me finish his question as you suggest. This commutation relation is a a dagger minus a dagger a equals one. And so when we have something like that's not only ordered like a a dagger, we just write it as one plus a dagger a. So we make this substitution everywhere. And so this turns into 2 a dagger a plus 1. And that's how you roll the order everything. OK, now your question. Why do we normally order? Well, because then beta h plus a dagger a Alpha is just H of beta star alpha, beta alpha. For example, up here, beta H alpha would be beta omega A dagger A plus R A dagger plus R bar A plus the sum C N M A dagger N A M alpha. Okay. But remember what the adjoint of this relation is. The adjoint of this relation, especially if you ch and if you change alpha to beta is beta a dagger equals beta beta bar. Or beta star. And so this thing turns into, let me go up to here, just to use up the blackboard space. This would then be beta, omega, beta bar, alpha, because the alpha would turn, the A would turn, would pull an alpha out of here, and the A dagger would pull a beta bar out of there. 
and then it would be plus r beta bar plus r bar alpha plus the sum cnm beta bar to the n alpha to the m all black with an alpha here. Now there are nothing but numbers in here. And so this is equal to beta alpha omega beta bar alpha plus r beta bar plus r bar alpha plus sum cnm beta bar n alpha m. And this is just beta alpha h of beta bar alpha. So all this was exact. Now we're going to be cavalier, and we're going to say that this is approximately equal to the order epsilon beta alpha e to the minus i epsilon h of beta bar alpha. So that's good only to first order and epsilon. But since we take the limit, <coughs> epsilon go to, going to zero, that's OK. <coughs> All right, so I pretty much used up that black bone. Let me come over here. then this would be e to the beta bar alpha minus a half beta squared minus a half alpha squared minus i epsilon h of beta bar alpha. And now um, what we're going to do is we're going to let beta bar equal alpha 2 And alpha, we're going to call alpha 1. And so now just recopying that formula, what we get is e to the alpha 2 bar alpha 1 minus alpha 2 squared plus alpha 1 squared divided by 2 minus i epsilon h of alpha 2 bar alpha. One. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, alpha 2 is alpha 1 plus alpha 1 dot epsilon. And this is what, of course, we did back uh, when we were doing path integrals a while ago. And in fact, since we now really only have one variable alpha, we might as well say here, that this is alpha plus epsilon alpha dot. And so now our matrix, our equation is alpha plus epsilon alpha dot e to the minus i epsilon h of a dagger a alpha is and so now all we have to do is copy that formula and substitute for alpha 2 this and for alpha 1 just alpha. And so this is e to the alpha plus epsilon alpha dot 
star alpha minus a half alpha plus epsilon alpha dot star alpha plus epsilon alpha dot minus a half alpha star alpha minus i epsilon h. And now we're only working to first order epsilon. And so what we have here is h of alpha plus epsilon alpha dot star alpha. But I'm, since we multiply that by epsilon, or minus i epsilon, I'm going to ignore this term. And so this is just h of alpha star alpha. So this has become much simpler. By the way, when I was first writing up these notes, um, I thought, well, instead of deriving all this by myself, why don't I just Google it and see what there is on the web? And the web treatments were so complicated, um, unnecessarily so. And so what I'm giving you is much simpler. Now, maybe I clicked on the wrong links, but I tried two or three or four links, and they were all very And I'm talking about getting to this stage. All right, so now we just uh, simplify this. This is e to the epsilon alpha dot star alpha minus a half epsilon alpha dot star alpha minus a half epsilon alpha star alpha dot minus i epsilon h of alpha star alpha. All right, and then there's some more cancellation, and we just get e to the epsilon over 2 alpha dot star alpha minus alpha star alpha dot minus i epsilon h alpha star alpha. Of course, alpha dot is d by dt of alpha. Okay, so any questions or hunger pains? on the order of alpha star alpha. Is that from that first term in the exponential there? First you mean all right, this one? You're, uh, up top. Up all right, top. Sorry, not all the way up. Second. One down. Or down one. Down. Like so it, it's the second line here kinda. Or the third line. Yeah, and over there's like an alpha star alpha term on the far left of that exponential. This one minus a half alpha. Oh, okay, star. okay, I see. They, so those cancel, or that's up to the one that's half of that though. Yeah, and then there's an alpha star alpha. Yeah, let's let's do it carefully. This thing is that. Yeah. Alpha two squared is this. Alpha one squared is that. Yeah. And this one is this after I just blow blow off epsilon alpha dot star. So I get that, but I just... Because of the epsilon. If you're keeping the first order of epsilon, there's terms that aren't, aren't even order of epsilon. They're just... They cancel each other. They cancel each other? Is there one? Oh, yeah, there are cancellations. Oh, there you go. Okay. Alpha you go. Alpha star alpha star. Alpha. All right. Yeah, you see what's happening? Alpha star alpha is here. There's a minus a half alpha star alpha here and a minus a half alpha star alpha there. That's why right. those terms go away. Cool. All right. Thank Great you. question, though. And so that just gives us this, which is this. Okay, now what we're going to do 
is we're going to set alpha equal to, in other words, to get back to the language that we're used to, I'm going to let alpha be q plus ip over root 2. And now, um, what is this thing? In these terms, this thing is e to the epsilon over 4. Uh, maybe there's an easier way of doing this. I think it probably is. It's probably instructive to do it the long way, so let me do it the long way. Translate this into QP language, that's what we have. And remember, Q and P here are the variables, not the operators. And uh, we would be integrating over d2 alpha over pi, or equivalently over dq dp over 2 pi. And now there are a lot of cancellations. And so this is e to the i epsilon times a half q dot p minus q p dot minus h of p q. So that's all we have. Now, might as well leave. Yes. But when you write um, h of p q, why did I write it h of p no, q? When you write h of p q. Do you mean the same? Um, that's well, what I mean is function. take h of alpha star alpha, yeah, sub in that. replace alpha by q plus ip over root 2, replace alpha star by q minus ip over root 2. It's not going to you see what you get. It's not going to be the same function of alpha star. Alpha. That's right, that's right, that's right. That's, that's actually, all right, he's pointing out something important there. In other words, if h of alpha star alpha is, for example, omega alpha star alpha, as it might often be, h of um, pq is not going to be omega pq. Instead, it's going to be something, so let me, not omega pq, Instead, this thing would be, and let me try to get it right, uh, I think it would be omega over 2 p squared plus q squared. So without actually working it out, um, in fact, um, all right, why don't I work it out just, just, to, just to show ourselves what's going on. You take alpha plus alpha star, and what do you get? Alpha plus alpha star, the p's cancel, and we get um, root 2 q. So q is equal to alpha plus alpha star over root 2. And now you take alpha minus alpha star, and this would be root i root 2 p. And so p is equal to alpha minus alpha star over i root 2. And so now, if you take uh, p squared plus q squared, you see p squared plus q squared is going to give you alpha plus alpha star squared over 2. And then there's an omega. Well, let's put omega over 2 here. So omega over 2 
there. Actually, that's not p squared. p squared is this with a minus sign and a minus sign here. And then q squared would be alpha plus alpha star squared over 2. And um, so you see the, the alpha squared and the alpha star squared terms cancel. You get alpha alpha star here. You get alpha alpha star there. They add. And indeed, uh, you get omega over 2 times 2 alpha star alpha. Omega alpha, star alpha. So this is the correct expression. This is what H of PQ is. Omega over 2 P squared plus Q squared, as you'd expect. Any other questions? Okay, so so this is this is looking very nice then. And so this is the way we should look at it. Alpha plus epsilon alpha dot e minus i epsilon h alpha is e to the i epsilon Lagrangian minus i epsilon the total derivative. So if we put together a bunch of these, what we get is we can have the final state, e to the minus i t 
th i. And now we're going to put together how many of these? n equals t over epsilon factors, all looking like this. And that's going to give us an integral f alpha at t e to the minus i over 2 q of t p of t. That's integrating this thing. e to the i integral 0 to t l of alpha dt. So this is the action. Another factor that comes from integrating and it's e the i over 2 um, q0, p0 alpha of 0 initial state. And now d alpha. And what is d alpha? Let's see, do I not have the alpha here? Way, way down. D alpha is just a product, D alpha, say, of T, T2 alpha. Ah, sorry. I hope that's just allergies. Look, though, the window's open, we'll be all right. Is there a reason why you switch back to L of alpha? In your imagine, instead why of did I do that? Yeah. Um, well, just because everything's alpha. But, I mean, it could have been L of P and Q. You just, the way you go from L of alpha to L of P and Q is you just, alpha is Q plus I P over root 2. When you write the product over little t, is that one for each time slice? So, so in fact, is it literally one, what we would be doing, good question, literally what we would be doing would be product, you want to do it really rigorously, we've got n of these here. So n, little n t over epsilon, product n equals 1, capital N, where capital N is T over epsilon. David, are you hungry? <laughs> would, it not, would it not be N in the bracket? Why is it N big T over epsilon? Is it not N epsilon? Um, you're right, this is not n t over, it's n over epsilon. Isn't it just n epsilon? And, and it may even go from zero to n. I'm, I'm, you know, there's always this. Why is it not n times epsilon? Why is it not? In other words, the, n equals zero is you integrate over alpha zero, alpha zero. N equals one, you integrate over. But when n equals big. Oh n. yeah, this is yeah. wrong. Great questions. Thank you. 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 You burned a second. <laughs> or a third, whatever it is. Okay, so when finally n is capital N, t over epsilon is g2 alpha of t, capital T over prime. OK.
Okay, so that's the expression for but let me um, write it in a different form over here. These factors, by the way, this, as you go make the transition to field theory, this factor and that factor are the ones that bring in the I epsilon in the propagator.
All right, let me, um, I think maybe it's a good time to pause for story because the next step would be to extend this to several modes or several barriers, several degrees of freedom. Um, I've been reading, I finished the biography, the autobiography of um, Wilson, and I'm now reading a book called This Machine Kills Secrets. It's about WikiLeaks and those people. And um, there's an interesting story in it. Um, and it had to do with a, a man by the name, and I'm terrible with names. I remember faces very easily, but I just can't remember names. I think his name is Tim May. And if one of you knows, he's correct. Um, he was a, an Intel employee physicist, um, probably condensed matter, but uh, at any rate, in any event, he's a very good physicist. And um, this was back in it was probably the 70s, the early days of Intel. I think it only had 300 employees. And um, they had just won a big contract from, I think, AT&T to supply um, well, memory chips. Intel started out making memory, and it was CMOS memory. Um, MOS standing for metal oxide. I don't know what the S is. But, um, does anybody know what the S is? MOS? Semiconductor. Duh, yes. Thank you. That's worth a. Uh... Whoa! <laughs> okay, so. Um, so they made all these chips, and they were, um, it was a big contract, with, and, um, and so they were installed, and then AT&T found that they were getting errors, that their um, ones were turning into zeros and vice versa. And so the Intel people went into urgent mode, and, um, the head of Intel at the time, I forget his, what his name was, I think it was before Grove, Andy, Andy, Andy Grove took over, it was the one before that. Um, and he had an idea that maybe it was cosmic rays. And Tim May, if that was his name, was lounging in his pool, because this is California, so everybody has a pool. And, um, he was um, there in the pool and he was thinking about whether it could be cosmic rays and so he did a calculation and no, it couldn't be cosmic rays, it just weren't enough cosmic rays to cause this kind of problem. And um, then he started looking at the edge of the pool and he saw ceramic tiles and then he thought, well, um, ceramic tiles are made out of, um, well, I don't know quite what they're made out of, but um, some sort of earth-like clay, I guess, and that has radioactive elements in it. Thorium, possibly uranium, maybe radium, anyway. Various heavy metals, very heavy metals that are radioactive. And what had happened was that Intel had made a switch. To save a little bit of money, they switched from their old packaging to a new packaging in terms of uh, some sort of ceramics. And so then Tim May did a calculation. This, uh, could this be that the new packaging of the chips was emitting uh, typically alpha particles, which are helium nuclei, two protons, two neutrons, um, that would go into the CMOS trip, uh, chip and release enough electrons to change a, a plus into a minus, and uh, or one into a zero. And he estimated that you know it was plausible. So then he went into the lab and uh, did the experiment. Um, what was the experiment that he did. Um, I think 
the first thing he did was he he knew he, he computed how much how many alphas it would be due to the packaging. And he took a chip and put the um, put a source of alpha particles near it, but put a um, between the two put a uh, something that would absorb alpha particles. It turns out you can absorb alpha particles very easily. Skin essentially absorbs alpha particles. Um, um, it's a barrier to alpha particles. Um, and uh, indeed, there were no errors. And he took away the barrier. The error rate went error rate went up, and it went up to something that was plausibly like what was causing the problem. The lab, and then he checked it with uh, by seeing how much radioactivity was coming from the metal, from the product uh, casing. Just measuring that by putting the chips into a detector and counting the alphas, and uh, he realized that was it. And so Intel then had the solution, and then they had to remake all the chips with something that was not radioactive. And uh, they solved the problem and uh, went on to become a, I think they probably were the, the, the largest manufacturer of uh, memory chips um, until the Japanese started making very good memory chips. And then the Intel, um, the, the, the top level managers at Intel, this, made a dramatic decision. They bet the whole company on uh, switching from making memory chips to making CPUs. And, um, and uh, then they succeeded in doing that. And um, the company has since been extremely successful. So that's the story. Of He actually stayed at Intel maybe for another 10 years, but then left because um, by that time he was very wealthy first. And secondly, he thought that Andy Grove's discipline was a little too much. Uh, and he may have been right. Um, something to the effect that I uh, that the the bottom 10% of every division in Intel were always worried that they might be fired and new people hired. And uh, that's not a fun environment uh, to, to, to work in. So that might not have been a, a good thing. OK, so we can now make the transition to um, several modes. So here we were dealing with one mode, one Q, one P. Or equivalently, uh, if we're talking photons and one polarization, one momentum. Or if we're talking uh, a scalar field of mass m, then a particle of a given three momentum. And uh, so that's the, that's the mode. And we can go then from uh, from a single mode to a multi-mode situation. And then we would have, say, a lambda of um, k. This would be, in the photon case, it would be an annihilation operator. And then we would have a state that we write like that. And that would give alpha k, alpha lambda of k, And this alpha k, I mean, this alpha would be, in, in the case of a finite number, this would be alpha 1, or let us say it would be alpha of lambda 1 k1, alpha lambda 2 k2, alpha lambda 3 k3. So in the case, so I don't have to. write this expression well, dot, 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 alpha, lambda, n, kn. So for n modes, this would, 
be what it would be. And this would be, in other words, a, a product j equals 1 to n of the coherent state alpha lambda j of kj, just a product of these coherent states, and I guess it's what's called a direct product. In any event, we would then have that alpha lambda of k, or say lambda lambda i of ki on this state would then give alpha lambda i ki times this state like that. In other words, the, the annihilation operator would hit here, here, and it would come over here, and it would just ignore all the modes that it didn't belong to and just pull an alpha out from the one that it did belong to. All right, so so now all of this stuff can go through. exactly as before. In other words, what we can have is F E to the minus I T H I would be then an integral F would be um, I'm going to write this as e to the i v of t and then e to the i integral 0 to t l of all the alphas and in fact alpha of t dt and in fact because this is, is of all the alphas this would really be a d fourth x and then e to the i minus i phi of zero and then alpha of zero initial state and then d alpha and this d alpha would be a product over lambda and k of d2 alpha lambda of k over pi now this k is a four vector because this, you, don't, you, you, you have to integrate all, not only over all the modes, but over all the time slices. And um, Let me give an example of what this would look like, since this looks a little bit confusing here. The phase factors, of course, are just these things. This one and that one, but summed over all the modes. Yeah, sure, it's rotated. Sure. So this is phi of t, i phi of t, this is i phi of zero. Um, but let me show you now what lamb, what L would be. Well, 
the Lagrangian in a uh, field theory would be an integral of, in the simplest case, the scalar field would be phi, square, phi dot squared over 2 um, minus rad phi squared over 2, and then typically minus m squared over 2 phi squared, and then possibly some potential, some p of phi, and all this would be d q x. So this, this is a Lagrangian for a scalar field. It's the sort of thing that we used when we did the path integrals in, in field theory. And now we're imagining that this thing is normally ordered. And um, so now when the coherent states are on either side of that, in other words, we have um, let us say alpha plus epsilon alpha dot e to the i epsilon l alpha. So this thing would be, again, the first order in epsilon. It would mean that the annihilation creation operators here would be replaced by alpha or alpha star. Is that clear, or is that you want me, want me to do it in more detail? Okay, I'm not a mind reader. It's, you know, in other words, this would, okay, let me write down 5x. 5x, it's small. Um, 5x would be an integral a of k e to the i k x plus a dagger of k e to the minus i k x um, d q k over square root of 2 pi q 2 k 0 k0 being the square root of m squared plus k vector squared. So this is the simplest case. Where that smoke? Do you smell smoke also? Yeah. Is it just somebody smoking a cigarette walking by? <laughs> All right, so this is the field five. Um, let me quickly check, check my notes here to make sure I've got that phase right is. I can never keep track of which is which, partly because of course there are two conventions. Why is, why is it like that? Great question. 
the basic idea goes to the it goes to the, the the heart of field theory, namely that what you try to do is represent the canonical commutation relations. In other words, the way you get to field theory is you start with quantum mechanics where you have QP is I. Then you put in indices, J and K say, so this is I delta J K. And then you promote this to phi of let us say X, J and T, P, and P we call pi, of X, K and T. And that commutator should be I, a sort of delta x j x k, and this can, if you are doing, uh, if you put the universe in a box, then this can be a chronic delta, but more often it's delta q of x j minus x k. So you start with this quantum mechanical commutation relation. You go to the equal time field theoretic commutator. commutator. And now, what is pi? Well, pi is partial of the Lagrangian with respect to phi dot. And we see here's the Lagrangian. It's phi dot squared over 2. So this is actually just pi, phi dot. And so then what you want is to make sure that you have phi pi to be i delta. But you also want phi of x and t phi of y and t to be 0, and also pi of x and t, pi of y and t to be 0. And it may be useful for me to actually answer this question in detail and show you that this works. So let's, let's, let's do that. So, the commutator of phi of, let us say, x and t, phi dot of y of t, what will this be? Well, it's an integral a of k. By the way, we ought to get uh, make sure this sign is right. Does, it, can, does anybody have z's book? It would be the opposite of what z of z sign. if Z is right. And we would have dqk, dqk prime over square root of 2 pi to the 6, 
2 k is 0 or 2 omega if you want. Okay, so this would be the commutator. All right. A with A is 0. A dagger with A dagger is 0. So the important ones are just A with A dagger and vice versa. So A with A dagger gives us delta of k minus k prime. So this would be delta of k minus k prime from this commutator multiplied by i omega prime And we could then have e to the i kx minus i k prime y from that term. And then from this other term, we would get minus i omega prime. And this now is a dagger a, so that commutator is minus, brings in a minus sign, delta of k minus k prime e to the minus i kx plus i k prime y. And we still have d cubed k, d cubed k prime over this square root. Okay, the delta k minus k prime gets rid of the k prime integration. It moreover sets k equal to k prime. Omega prime becomes omega, so it's i omega e to the i k x minus y plus i omega e to the minus i k x minus y g cubed k and now this is 2 pi cubed 2 omega and now you see the 2 omegas the omegas cancel you get a a 2 up here, a 2 there. d cubed k over 2 pi cubed is the three-dimensional delta function. And so this is i delta q of x minus 1. And what, what I should um, maybe assign as a homework problem is to show that phi of x with phi of y is zero and phi dot of x with phi dot of y is zero. Or I could do that explicitly in class. I think maybe it's better for you to do it as a homework problem for next week. So this, um, this is why this relation relation is right. And now one, we should ask ourselves does this make sense? In other words to, it's surely true that you have QP equals I in quantum mechanics. You have quant a quantum mechanics of several modes. It's surely true that QJ with PK commutator is I delta JK. But now, should you extrapolate that to arbitrary points in space where you're describing different points as different real numbers, um, this may be this may be why there are these infinities in quantum field theory. Um, in other words, it may be a step too far going to this um, extrapolating like that. But um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not, nobody really knows why they're the All right, why don't we, does somebody have a question? All right, why don't we stop the recording? Yes, David, are you familiar?